So we have this guy who's who's become saved, gets to know Christ because he's just reading the Old Testament, and then a believer comes alongside and shows him. Do you see it? Do you see Jesus here in the Old Testament? And uh, are you are you there, or are you listening, buddy? Yeah, I've been listening. What's up? What, what do you think about uh, what do you think about this line of evidence or this line of uh, argumentation for? Um, for Christianity as, as maybe something that can be used as a uh, argument for um, the. So I, I would, I would say I, I personally would not find an argument would. Let me restart that to me, Jesus being in the old Testament is something that you can find in the Bible. I don't disagree with that statement. Mm -hmm. um, I don't disagree that the new Testament references the old Testament as sort of a interconnected woven tapestry. Right. Where I think that fails as a uh, argument to use is you're kind of assuming the Bible is more than a book, right? Mm -hmm. If you if I look at the Bible as just a book, then I don't see there an issue connecting dots, <laughs> you know? Right. So um, I mean, that that would be my point of view. I'm not gonna say anything he's saying is wrong, but if I just view the Bible like I do the Harry Potter series, mm -hmm. you can probably find Voldemort in. Uh, order of the the first book, whatever it is, if you want, if you look hard enough, that doesn't mean Voldemort is real, right? I understand that, but um, specifically, I'm going to go to uh, in a minute to uh, Isaac, and uh, um, there's a lot of um, parallel there. I mean, it's probably one of the one of the better ones to show um, that, um, like, let's say you were writing a book, let's like um, Harry Potter, um, yeah, you, you might you might you might want to foreshadow you know, what's going to go on later on. And then when someone reads it later on, then they can go back and, you know, connect it. But, um, you know, it almost would be like the, the writers would have to be trying to fit it. What they're fit, what they wrote down about Jesus to the old Testament. Would you kind of agree with that? If, um, if, if, I, if, if, if it's, if it's, if it's a really, if it's a, if it's a, a really good, um, if the allegory or the or the symbolism is really like kind of you know where you, yeah where it's like hard to deny or, or not hard to say hard to deny but very compelling, you know what I mean? Um, do you think that they probably um, they probably just looked to the Old Testament and and tried to make that parallel, or they got lucky making that parallel? Or um, I imagine the founders of the Christian, I, you know, I, I'm no expert on ancient Christianity. Yeah, right? I'm not either. I'm just, yeah. <laughs> But um, I far. kind of would view it uh, in the sense that, yeah, they wrote the book to achieve this purpose. So they do their research ahead of right. time. Yeah. And then um, that's 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 usually the line that I'll um, if I ever bring this up. And that's why I don't generally and just and I can open discussion if I'm in a room like, in a, like over at Knox room or something, because. You know, they could just say, uh, well, yeah, of course they could uh, make it. They could make the uh, New Testament do anything they want because they had the Old Testament. But um, being that, um, you know, but the claim of Jesus being God, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, and God providing the sacrifice, which goes always back to Genesis, really, when he when he's slain the first animal to cover Adam and Eve. Yes. That was foreshadowing right there that he was going to um, provide his uh, a sacrifice. So, um, so you fast forward to Jesus and, and you know, what he came and what he taught, what he did and, 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 um, and he fulfilled that sacrifice. Um, it almost would have to be like somebody was really making Jesus up. So like the, actually that the man named Jesus lived, which most historians agree he did live. And, um, you know, you could maybe argue, you know, if they attributed things to him where it happened or not is, um, it was a pretty big coincidence at least. Wouldn't you well, say? I guess my, my response to that would be the old Testament, at least in my understanding, the old Testament isn't super specific, you know, a, a sacrifice happening, the lamb in Genesis for what's that? You're talking about uh, Isaac and his son, right? That lamb with the lamb that yeah. was in the bushes, mm -hmm. right? I can't remember. I think it was Isaac, but 
that's where well, it was a ram it was a ram yeah ram yeah sorry mm -hmm. um those are there's not a lot of specificity necessarily sure there's the virgin birth and stuff like that but those are kind of tropes that appear in lots of religions and i guess my response to that would be and again this is upon the jews have nowadays right is that uh jesus fulfilling those isn't very fancy like that's not something that couldn't have happened by the writers right okay um well we'll we'll go into maybe i, I mean i'm gonna play um I might stop right here for just a minute where he's at so we can go over there so we can uh, pull this video up. Um, okay. I, can, I can share screen um, real fast. Um, maybe uh, I've got something pulled on my phone here. Hang on just a second. I'm sorry. I apologize. My mom's texting me. Maybe text me back real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've just been... Well, yeah, never mind what you do. You're all right. Um, no, I had, didn't have this pulled up, but I can real quick on my uh, PC. Um I was just going to play the video, but I'll give you a few things in there. But actually, you know, we can just go to the video because he goes over even actually a little better. I can just read some of these. Um, Isaac and Jesus were the only beloved sons. Righteous uh, um, Ishmael had been sent away. Both Isaac and Jesus are identified as the son of Abraham. Both were offered in sacrifice. The sacrifice was offered in the, the land of Moriah, which the mountain is is um, important. Um, and you'll see it in the video. Both sons carried the wood for their sacrifice, and that's a, there's a little more to that too. Which will actually, you know what? We'll just do the uh, video because it's going to be better than what I had on this little site. <laughs> I apologize, I've got it pulled up. So let me uh, stop this sharing real quick and pull it up. And I'll have to stop and commentate on it because, of course, I didn't get permission up from him to use it. But I, most most people don't have a problem. But I think it's okay as long as you're um, commentating on it. Let me see here. Stop this one and make sure I share audio because I'm terrible at that. <coughs> and I'm going to fast forward a little into it because he's just going to go over some things probably in the beginning that we kind of Mike touched on and I've touched on. Okay, let me get here. And if I skip around a little bit, apologize. Um, it's been a few since I've listened to this. So, yeah, sure. Let me just stop it. And I think it's midways here. Let me find things it. Things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. Is that too loud? Because no, that's it, fine. Sound okay? Okay. Or too low? Either one. It's fine. You're fine. All right. And he said, "Behold, here I am." Was was on put on the cross at, at Mount Calvary. Uh, and this mountain that they're about to go up to is parallel to that mountain. So, do you catch that right there, Ogre? Yes. Okay, that, that's that's pretty. That's a pretty big uh, thing there, um, because if if Jesus was indeed um, crucified on Mount Calvary, and it's it is directly parallel to Mount Moriah, then um, do you think that? Um, well, would you do? I don't even know if you accept that Jesus was crucified. Um, do you accept? Um, I am of the opinion that a dude named Jesus at one time existed, and I have no reason to doubt that he was actually put up on a big wooden tee. Okay, and but you're but m maybe you're not sure if it was on Mount Calvary or not. So I, I am not. I have no reason to deny that. Okay, well that's why I said this is probably a thing that's more for believers as far as like strengthening their faith than it is yeah. a good argument. But um. I just like to, you know, point it out, but we'll go ahead with one of it. So here's Mount Calvary, and here's Mount Moriah. Christ one human sacrifice that he that pleased him, and that was sacrifice of the Son, the Lord Jesus, for our sin. But uh, uh, Chris, so it went against his nature. Yeah, but uh, but, but Abraham believed okay. him, and, and whenever God told him, it was as good as done already. So yeah, buddy. So um, I'm. Looking up, trying to find these mounts that you're talking that he's talking about, mm -hmm. uh, Mount Moriah, Mount uh, Calvary, what have you, because that's that's something that I think you're arguing is significant, right? Yeah, it's one point. Yeah. Um, do you have a source to show how close these mount these hills actually are to each other? Because I'm having a terrible time figuring it out. 
Yeah, we'll, we'll look for one in just a minute here. Okay. But you could continue this. I'm just, yeah. that's what I'm busy on. So, sure. Yeah. We'll, we'll, and, I, and I'm glad you entered the room because this is, this is great that we can, uh, you know, we can, we can discuss it because it's hard, you know, for, to get a good skeptical view. You know what I mean? Yeah. For, for me to do, do both sides. So, <laughs> yeah. So, something I run into a I lot in that. Um, this theology conversations is people kind of um, assume something is more profound than it is. Uh, Cause in, in the quick Google search and I've been doing, it seems as though there was sort of a lot of mountains by this location. Mount Moriah, I think is where they built a temple. Mm-hmm. Um, let me see if I could try to find it. Solomon's temple was built on Mount Moriah. And it kind of seems as though like, these are just some Hills that, the Jewish people kept living by, which makes it seem like, you know, if you didn't take this as a holy thing, you would, it would kind of be saying, look, this hill that we live by, we're going to continue using it, which to me doesn't sound very profound, you know? Right. Um, but I don't, did the Romans partic- uh, specifically, um, they, 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 if I'm not, if I'm correct, didn't they specifically, um, um, do crucifixions uh, uh well they didn't necessarily do, do them on hill uh, mountains like that did they uh, i, I, actually, I they, they crucified everywhere I yeah they, they just yeah. Of life of brian of course but right that's why i was saying that um for him to be uh for them to take him onto the mountain like that but um i'll do a little uh, that'll be something for me to look into thank you though for bringing that up yeah no problem that's just i just wanted to interject with oh that yeah stop, but you yeah, can go back to the video any, anytime go right go right ahead you're not interrupting at all oh so by faith, it was as good as done. His son hadn't died yet, but it was as good as done. The Apostle Paul, who wrote half of the, about half of the New Testament, who inspired by the Holy Spirit, he went through passages like this all through the New Testament and showed them Christ, showed them the types of Christ. I'm sure he specifically showed them this, Genesis 22. I'm sure he did. Uh, so keep that in mind uh, as we go through this. So... Uh, We'll get back. Uh, to- and that's exactly what Mike Winger was talking about. He was saying he was saying the same thing. He's pretty sure they would have used that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So sure. it would have it influenced the, the the writers. So that you know, makes sense. That would be in there. But, you know, I, I, I get a, um, sometimes of some pushback, but I don't think it, from you that um, it's necessarily conspiracy more that it's just um, coincidental in the fact that they're writing in the times and um, that they obviously are familiar, familiar with the Old Testament. So, course some of it would 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 make its way in there so i'm i'm looking up the uh golgotha thing that you uh pointed me at and i got a uh restored church of christ website mm-hmm. um this says this kind of throws a bit more shade on the you know amazingness of these two mountains because it's saying god told abraham to go to the land of moriah to offer his only son isaac as a sacrifice on one of the mountains in the sense that there is there isn't like this hill that we call Moriah, or there isn't this hill that we call Calvary. It's these areas that are around. Yeah, here. but I think his, his overarching point was that they were both, um, you know, in the same general era, parallel. You know what I mean? On two mountaintops, you know. So I mean, that's the same thing as like you know where he's. Um, I don't know if he's gotten into the. Um, part, I apologize. I was looking uh, on the um, what you were talking about. While yeah. he was talking, but um, were they carrying these? You know, we were carrying the bundle of wood. You know what I mean? Yes, yes, and, yes. Um, you know, of course, Christ was, um, you know, crucified on um, a, a well, some a cross, but you know, in some some translations, it's a a, a tree or yep, you know, a log. So well, I guess I got a symbolism there. Yeah, yeah. I guess I, I mean, it is part of my point though is that there's a lot of these uh parallels that are exaggerated for the sake of the religion right um you this he he put his hands right next to each other he said these two hills right next to each other and that's a gross over exaggeration i mean that's kind of part going a bit to my point you know i'm not again i'm not saying it doesn't work for you it doesn't bolster if it bolsters your faith good for you but to me you know, he says that, and then you go and look into it, and you find out that's not exactly the way he's saying. I mean, if they if these two hills were, we knew exactly what Isaac was. Uh, like, if Jesus could look to the left and see, hey, that's where Isaac was almost sacrificed, maybe you'd have something there. 
but that doesn't seem to be the case. Okay, yeah, on that one, on that one point, that's fair enough. You know what I okay. mean? Um, we'll we'll go on a little bit, a little bit further here. And see yeah, yeah, yeah. Here. I don't, I don't, um, I don't know exactly where he's at. Um, so let's play for a second. I apologize. I should be keeping up with both. Okay, five and <laughs> Abraham said unto his young men, "Okay, so by here, so so man of the world, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ was the Lamb, the perfect Lamb, uh, the Lamb." Of- and I guess right here to org is where I would be saying like. I guess you would have to really, in my view, um, they would have to be looking if 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 the, what they presented in the in the gospels and even in uh, what Paul wrote, they would have to be kind of really looking to um, put that symbology in there in the text. Yes, you know, because I don't see that um, that that would be pretty um, a pretty big coincidence. You know what I mean? If it just if it was if it truly happened, like you know was recorded in the new Testament. So, well, I guess my response to that would be, I don't see why they wouldn't be getting super deep into it. (laughs) I mean, it's their religion, right? You guys are studying the Bible super deep. I'm sure if you were able to, right. But the the Jews of the time, see, they missed this. Do you know what, you know what I mean? So it it was, you know, so it seems like the the Jews would have, would have picked up on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, that's actually something I started looking up. I had a Wikipedia was the best source, but, why, if this is such good evidence, why don't the Jews believe it yet? And they got their whole, you know, smattering of different views well, you, on that subject as well. So, and yeah, and well, I haven't went real deep into this, but I do know that um, a lot of the rabbis, um, um, there is a video of somebody that goes over there and does, and it reveals it. But um, the suffering service, suff, <laughs> suffering servant, say it five times fast. Easy, for me, easy for me to say, right? But um, that passage um, is to me clearly about Jesus um, and um, yeah, to the point to where the rabbis really take it. I believe they take it out right now um, or, or they don't take it out, but I, I believe they do. They exclude it and uh, to where like uh, they only read it and you know when they study the text and the, the average, the average person doesn't have that um, available because they said it's too confusing. And um, maybe I'll get a source for that here in a second. Um because there's a, a gentleman and I forget his name that goes over the, over to um, um, Israel and um, just goes on the street and asks the average people if they know about that passage. And most yeah. people don't, they don't. And, um, and there was some, um, there was at the time, there was some uh, conflict between the rabbis. Um, um, you have a couple lines there, but that's getting a little bit more outside of my, um, I guess my, uh, What's the Obama term? Pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I don't want to go speaking on things I don't know much too much about. But as I, I said, I had to go to Wikipedia to find stuff. This isn't something I'm, you know. Yeah, Shadow Dancer says yeah, they admit they, they do admit Isaiah fifty three because f- they really almost have to believe that um that it's about Israel and it's just so clearly not. You have to shoehorn it in to, for it to fit for Israel and it doesn't fit. You know. And we could that that's like almost a whole nother stream right there. I'd have to do to, to unpack yeah, that. You'd have to find a rabbi to have that conversation with. Yeah. Um but they did have a um a content there was some um the confusion on it, you know, if there was gonna be uh the, the son of David, you know, and the um uh, they they thought maybe there were gonna be two messiahs or which line they were gonna come from. So that's then like I said, that's another thing to unpack. But um sure. I wanna kinda keep it, I guess, simple for right now. Okay. Yes. Let me get, finish this up here. Unless they put some kind of copyright even into the description, <clears throat> excuse me, you're fine. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Doki says Mariah means to provide, right? So she's she's questioning that, and so God was giving him a hint that where to go, I'll provide. Yeah, that's a good point too. Yeah. Um, I need to look. I need to look that up. I've got a. I always keep a notebook by my uh, where I'm at, so I'm always writing this stuff down. Links, but um, that's why I make a lot of people moderators so they can just post the links and stuff. But that's good information. Do you mind if I but, ask you really quick? Yeah, really, go ahead. Really quick. Okay, so you were talking about um, videos that you've watched about uh, people going out and evangelizing <laughs> to Jews, right? Talking yeah. about. Mm-hmm. I I I cannot remember the channel that I watched, but. It was literally someone who's going out evangelizing on Isaiah 53. Is it a younger man? 
Yes. Yeah, yes. that's what and I'm talking he, and about. And I can't remember speaks, his name. Save my life, though. Yeah, <laughs> and he speaks Hebrew or whatever, mm -hmm. and he, he goes, you know, well, what if there was, you know, this evidence that, uh, you know, someone was to be born and prophesied with all this stuff, you know, whatever, you know, and they're like, well, sure. And then they read them Isaiah 53, and they're like, well, but that's not in my Bible. And they're like, I know, because it was removed from your Bible, like, 1,500 years ago. <laughs> yeah, know, and that's what I brought to you, and I, I, I'm... They admitted it, did they not? They have I mean, actually. They, oh, yeah, absolutely. It, it, I mean, of course, they keep it between the rabbis when they, you know, um, but they, it's in there, I guess. So they, I have a little bit of a different opinion on you that I think it's actually by design. Uh -huh. Because there are many uh, Pharisees and Sadducees that were very mad at Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so you've got the, you've got all these breakoffs, you know, right after uh, the time of Jesus and the time of the apostles. And you've got all these split offs of all these religions, right? Of all these sects, I guess. S E C T S sounds bad when I say it, but um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, sections of Christianity that break off um, about like a century or two after Christ. And a lot of them have to do with just differing opinions about Christ, about whether he's divine, about whether he was not. I mean, you've got the Nicene Christians, you've got the Aryan Christians, and this is before Catholicism. So you mean mm -hmm. you've got all kinds of stuff that breaks off, and um, <laughs> and I think that there were a lot that had agendas to either suppress uh, some information, withhold uh, withhold some information, hold up some information, like. There was a Roman historian that said there was nothing more bloody than two Christians arguing about the Trinity. Mm. And this was in like 170 AD. Wow. This is a long time ago, right? Yeah, but the, yeah, but the, the Jews, though, they, they typically um, were, were oral for a long time. So that when they, but they wouldn't generally hold back, you know what I mean? Like, let's say, like the Roman Catholic Church would, you know what I mean? Where they literally, had had a had a different language, you know, so the people couldn't really and they'd have to come to them to get their um to get their knowledge. Well they started they started to. And here's the thing is that when Jesus came, he didn't just divide the Gentiles, he divided the Jews too. So Definitely. think about that. Yeah. Point. So that division of Jews that he divided, think about all the different sections that they split off into, you know, um determined to believe that Jesus was not the Christ. And, and that's, that's a good point for, uh, I don't mean to cut you off, it's a good point to for people, the historicity of just Jesus, whether you accept that, um, you know, he he is who he said he was, but he was actually a really, come, he was a real life man, because a lot of people deny that, because the Jews could have easily dispelled that if they just would, I mean, at the time, there were Jewish historians that wrote about it, about him, they could just say, you know, this you know, this is there are fabulous. Roman historians that wrote about yeah, it. Yeah, like, it could have said, just, well, we found the body or whatever, yeah, you know what I mean? It's so relevant when people to, try to, to say that Jesus away, didn't, but... yeah, when Jesus didn't live, no, 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 he lived. Whether or not you yeah. believe he's divine or not, that's the argument. That's actually the main yeah, argument. Yeah. We have yeah, so I, much. I would agree with that. Yeah, we it's... have so many references to the fact that but... Jesus lived. Yeah. Or, org is, is, uh, um, is an atheist a little bit of is skeptical, but fair. What, what do you think? Or uh, do you think that there's enough evidence that Jesus did live at least? I, I as I was saying, I am of the opinion that there may have that Jesus. I guess yeah, I'd probably agree with Shadow Dancer, wherein was there a dude that this religion maybe was founded around? Sure, was he healing the blind and all these other things and causing these curtains to shatter to shear in half when he died? That I'm definitely questioning. Um, I guess I would say the historical references from. Uh, like contemporary, quote unquote, contemporary Roman sources. Uh, if I remember correctly, those mostly talk about the cult of Christianity more mm -hmm. so than like the dude Jesus. You know, like the uh, four gospels were, were written down many years after Jesus died, you know? So people aren't necessarily talking about Jesus as a dude, but they're talking about the cult that is starting to surface after his death. Well, that's actually not entirely true. Uh, the latest Gospels that we have recorded are less than 20 years after Jesus. And when we look at historical uh, documents, like a very good one is about the Buddha. They're actually not entirely sure if the Buddha was a real person. And these documents were written 300 years after his supposed life and death. 
Sure. And, uh, you know, so when it comes to historicity, like when we try to look at, you know, we try to find documents as close to the person's time period. Whether you believe Jesus was divine or not is kind of irrelevant, in your opinion, no offense. Um, but the fact that a man lived that was named Jesus and he supposedly did these miracles, all right, this is written about whether these miracles are true or not, that, that's, that's up to you to believe, right? But they are still written about. And they are written within two decades of the life and death of this supposed character. And we have evidence of that. And it's not just Roman historians. It's, it's written all over, not even just by Jews. Um, yeah, you say 20 years is short enough to not to be close. I say 20 years is long. We're kind of having a this and that conversation at that point. Yeah, right? I think well, they, they say what 40 years before legend starts to creep in or something like that. No, that, that's actually that, that's that's irrelevant because the yeah. thing is, when you go back 2000 years, all right, you have to remember something. This is 2000 years ago. And if you creep into something that's like 40 years 100 years, you know, you can still get some fairly accurate data. It really just depends on who the author is and uh, what's the uh, the prominence, providence, excuse me, the providence of the uh, documents that they come from. All right. Now, when it comes to the Buddha, no one actually knew him. That Here's here's the biggest thing. Ogre. I'm sorry. I say your name, Ogre, because I'm dyslexic. I think that's what he genuinely was going for originally what you say, you say that ogre <laughs> Dude, yeah, should exactly. i say a different name so i don't i no, don't want to offend I you i think that's what he's oh, talking about. Right. You're oh cool. okay okay well i kind of like it because i'm a gamer so i'm like ogre 343 cool <laughs> <laughs> anyway so when it comes to something that's within the lifetime of somebody i i think you're kind of downplaying how historically significant that is two thousand years ago if we had something like that 3,000 years ago, historians would be jumping for joy because we don't have that kind of stuff. That's the thing. In history, we don't have that kind of stuff. We very seldomly have anything within 50 years of the event, more than about 800 years ago. All right, and you're talking about something 2,000 years ago that we have evidence within less than two centuries or less than two decades. Like, that's actually incredibly accurate. Now, whether you believe in the faith aspect or not, that's irrelevant. As um, I was saying at the start of all this, I'm not arguing Jesus never existed. I didn't um, hear the beginning. I apologize. I just got in. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, I, I think he's I, open to that. I mean, a, or, a, dude, a dude named Jesus existing around this time period. Sure, I, I don't see any. Re I don't see that as a, a big molehill necessarily. I mean, you, do um, you believe like I mean, a, a, a man named Jesus was crucified, but maybe he you know thought he, he he said you know he was he said things and then he was crucified for that. I do, do not that? find it out of the realm of possibility okay. that the cult of Christ existed without okay. Jesus commit without Jesus making the miracles and being the Son of God and resurrecting the third day. I think the cult of Christ. The cult of Christ could exist without the divine part. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, I think you and George may have touched on it in the chat where I would maybe say, like, you know, were the apostles and, and the early um, followers of Christ that went to their death, you know, what I mean? yes, believing what they did, that would be that would be evidence. You know what I mean? I would. Well, I would and again, I could you could reference literally every religion having that sort of stuff going on. Well, actually, so, it's, a little, it's a little bit different what Chris is talking about, because there are definitely people who have drank the Kool-Aid and died, you know, yeah. and, you know, yeah. they said they believed in something. But the thing is that they never saw that event. They never saw these things happen. These apostles said that they saw Jesus rise from the dead and they died for it. Now, if they died for something that they knew to be false, because people have died for things that they knew to be false all the time, right? But sure. they weren't actually there at the event. Here's the difference with the apostles. Now, you can't apply this to anybody after that, right? Because they didn't know Christ. But the apostles, out of the 12, I think nine or 10 died, were, were uh, killed in various ways. Um, and yet they witnessed the death and the resurrection of Christ. Why would they die for something that they know that could be potentially not legitimate when they actually saw it. They say that they saw that it happened. And then we have these, these documents that are um, within, you know, two decades of Christ. That's it's, it's, 
it kind of yeah, it kind of leaves I, a lot I, of I evidence. Understand, on Jesus I understand brother, the point. James was also stoned by the death by the Jews, so that was a that would be a yeah. For, it, the, like like one of them was like hung upside down or something like that. Yeah, yeah, Peter. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Um, again, to me, the argument stands for modern day uh, drink the Kool Aid examples as well. The people at Jonestown knew David Koresh. And they went and they died. Some, not all of them, but some of them chose to drink it, dying for something they believed in. That to me is a one-to-one analogy there. But so wait, yeah, I know actually... not, not everyone drank the Kool-Aid intentionally, but some did. Well, but did they actually know him? Yeah, they were like yeah, in, yeah, they were, talking about Jonestown. Yeah, Jonestown. They had that little like thing in the jungle. Yeah, the the uh, they, they the old fam- the famous drink the Kool-Aid. Yeah, they they went down there. Um, and yeah, he was definitely a um, a false yeah a false prophet, and they followed him in there and drunk the Kool Aid and died. Yeah, that's yeah. So I mean, people dying for something they believe in is not to me. A, if it if it works for you, if it strengthens your faith, more power to you. To me, it's not a good argument because we have so many examples of people doing this, even contemporary contemporaneously. I think that's the word. To the supposed savior, but the, but you have to you have to throw in there the caveat on the on the Jones hand that they really I don't think a lot of them really thought they had a way out because the way well, he manipulated them, you know what I mean? Again, I, I admitted that not all yeah. of them wanted to drink the Kool Aid, but argue, the, uh, you can't prove uh, that them, not not a single one of them didn't actually believe David Koresh. Well, wait, wait hold on. So let me you're, you're confusing names there. David Koresh was Waco. Oh, no, who, who is it then? Yeah, well, we know who, we know who you're talking about. So yeah. let me ask you another question. All right. So these people game. believed blindly in this stuff, right? They mm-hmm. blindly meaning, you know, we look back on it 2020 vision, it you know, Joan, we see, you know that it that it was yeah. false, right? Oh uh, yeah, okay, yes, go ahead, go ahead, okay. So we we see that it's false, right? All right. So what people are saying today, historians, agnostic, and atheist scholars, is that you know this religion was fake. Jesus never rose from the dead. Um, and that these basically these apostles would have known that, and yet they died anyway for this cult, right? Yeah. Okay. These people that drank the Kool Aid actually believed in what they believed in. They didn't know that it was false. They believed in it, right? Well, I I, I hope so for this well, sake. Exa- yeah. Exactly. Well, but think about the apostles. It was the same way. Yeah, I believe the apostles believed what they were doing. Yes. No, but they saw it too, see, right? Jesus, I mean, in Jonestown, like you know, the the John, he was he was um, that this would have been afterwards. So see, they would die with him or whatever, you know what I mean? But like, let's say if you give those people the choice, like let's say Jones would have died, and they they would have uh, um, somehow seen that, he, like if he said that um, we're gonna drink this Kool Aid and we'll come back to life, and he drank it and he didn't come back to life. They would have been, they would have automatically been like, well, this guy's lying. You know exactly. What I mean? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so that's what I'm trying to say. Like, you know, they they wouldn't have died for something that they knew was a lie. That was no <laughs> point. Yeah. That that was yeah. That was the someone overall else. Point someone point. else makes a way better argument than me yeah. on that. You know, like I, so, I, I I believe I understand what you're trying to get at, mm-hmm. and I I feel like we're rehashing the same topic here. So um, do you mind say, if I ask, you mind if I ask? You, can I change it a little bit? Because I've I've said I'm. Uh, I've talked to you before. Uh, so I'm the one that studies history all the time. Yeah. Okay. So I took a comparative religions class. I've taken a lot of religious classes and, uh, have you heard this where, um, Hinduism is, or I'm sorry, excuse me. Let me reverse that. Buddhism is a reaction to Hinduism. Christianity is a reaction to, uh, Judaism. Have you heard that before? I can, I can see that logic train. Yes. Okay, so that I took an East uh, intro to Eastern religions class, and this is what my professor said. And you can act, you definitely can see that in Hinduism, Buddhism. You can see it in Taoism. Da- you can see it in Confucianism. You can see it in Taoism, um, but you cannot see it with Christianity and Judaism. They try to separate the two, and I was just curious if you agree with Judaism and Christianity being that. Uh, Christianity being a reaction to Judaism. Mm-hmm. Um, again, I I haven't taken these comparative religion studies, but off the top of my head, I can see where it's coming from in the sense that Christianity is the right. Jesus was the uh, what did he come f- to fulfill the 
commandment or whatever the phrase is, right? Well, but that's not what a reaction is. So like, okay, so Hinduism and Buddhism, the reason why they think, and it, there's actually historical significance to this, Hinduism was definitely a very, uh, it's got the caste system. Yes. Right? So when the Buddha came about, the, the supposed Buddha, you know, he wanted to break that caste system. So it's a reaction to the old system to try to change it and overthrow it. And sure. to like, you know, make something outside that box. Well, they try to classify Judaism and Christianity the same way that Christianity is a reaction to Judaism. Um, being someone that is not familiar with the subject, I would need to hear the argument from that side before I can say anything on it. So the argument, I'm not that, saying, you're, I'm not saying course, you're lying, okay. but at the same time, like I know so little about what we're talking about here. Maybe there is a reason why a professor would say that. Oh, I but I don't know, reason. and you're not giving it to me. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'll, gi I'll give you the reason. I, I just was curious if you had heard this argument. Okay, so his reasoning was, is that, okay, so when we look at Hinduism and Buddhism, like with the caste system, and, um, you know, you're literally stuck in your caste, you cannot move beyond it. Hinduism was a little bit different. There's these paths and all that kind of stuff. Um, sure. so when they look at uh, Judaism and Christianity, Judaism looks like a monotheistic religion and Christianity looks like a polytheistic. And then you have all the Old Testament stuff, um, laws, lots of lots of Old Testament laws, right? And then Christianity's got this new law. Christ is the new law. Yes. Right? So it looks like a reaction. From the outside, I can see where they're talking about. It looks like a reaction to Judaism, you know, to the uh, oppressive order, I guess you could say, kind of like a caste system with Hinduism. So I'm not trying to be like biased against them. I I mean I took the class, took it for 16 weeks, so I totally have his side fully. I don't agree with it, but <laughs> um, <laughs> just because I have, well, I I've, I've studied a lot of stuff. But uh, I was just curious. I didn't know if you had actually heard of that. You know, you're talking about theology, so I didn't know if you had known yeah. about that thought process. Yeah, as as I've talked about with uh, Keith a lot, uh, Chris. Keith, how do yeah. you go? Um, as I talk, my area of expertise is geology, rocks, math, stuff like that. Um, theology is interesting to me, but yeah, I'm not going to stand up here and say I know what's going on. Gotcha, and, that, and that's fair enough because you know I'm 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 definitely in the same boat. <laughs> yeah, as far as but I, uh, uh, that's interesting. You so uh, what what did you say you took comparative religions class? So I've been taking history classes for <laughs> so quite I know a few big years. Into history, yeah. Yeah, and I so I took a comparative religions class, an Eastern religions class, and um, and just a lot of history classes that definitely always cover religion in some aspect, you know. And I just thought that was interesting how my professor portrayed it, and I thought, okay, from an outsider's perspective, I can kind of see what they're talking about because yeah. they obviously, well, they mis they actually even misrepresent Hinduism and Buddhism, you know. Um, it is a reaction, but it's not a reaction necessarily in the way you think it is. The Buddha, the guy from Taoism and uh, Muhammad all actually came from very similar backgrounds. They're all very wor wealthy merchants or wealthy class people. And um, they got tired of seeing the plight of the poor. And they went off and like spent like 10 years in the woods and came back and reintroduce a new uh, religion. If you look it up, all three of them are literally the same. They were all very wealthy people. Buddha or Buddha and Muhammad were he very was a wealthy. Prince, I believe Siddhartha was a prince, if I remember correctly. Yes. Yep. And then they came back and they sold everything. They got rid of their family. They disowned their family. And um, they went to, you know, a totally different religion totally different either paths whatever path it was you know some were more extreme some were less extreme um but it, i thought it was very interesting how the three of them and the three major ones besides christianity were very much reactions to the wealthy class versus the poor class christ was totally different that's why that's why i disagree with my professor when it comes to reaction between judaism and christianity because christ if that's true if we follow that logical path, Christ should have been born wealthy, and he wasn't. He was actually born the poorest of the poor and never actually even went above that. So I find that very interesting. Even if you just look at the, just the story, just the basic story, no divine aspect, you know, no um, godly aspect or whatever, it doesn't actually even match the other religions. So when he said that in my class, I was like, you know, that's actually kind of illogical. Like, 
let's look at things logically. You don't have to believe in the belief aspect, but just look at it logically. The the Christian and Judaism religion are one religion fulfilling another. That's all it really is. The other religions are not. They're they're totally different. Um. Well, I'm gonna say they they all you know wrong, <laughs> right? That's kind of my <laughs> stance on this. Um. Yeah, again, I'm just going to have to say, I mean, I'm not going to say anything you're saying is inaccurate, but you are kind of, as uh, Chris said earlier, j- punching above my pay grade. So, yeah. Which is you know, fair. Which is fair. I mean, you're, yeah, you're jumping into conversations that I'd love to go into, but I try not to um, in depth, right? I, I can do a very surface level approach to these, these talks. And they're interesting I'm topics. I'm trying to ditch. I promise, yeah. but I don't want to. No, we don't think you are. No, because they're interesting topics, and if you if you haven't studied them, you just you just don't have the information to yeah. be able to you know follow along or to be able to uh, um, actually critique. You know. Yeah. So. The other thing, to be hundred percent honest with you, is I'm actually playing European Truck Simulator right now, and I'm trying to finish. <laughs> That's mine. fine. So once I get done with this, I can browse Wikipedia while we're talking and hopefully catch up. Yeah, a bit. You're, you're you're fine. Uh, I always like I told Jesse, like I told um, when Org came in, I always I'm glad he joined um, or subscribed to my channel because he's always fair in all the chats. Um, we're in uh, very very seldom do you find um, somebody that's an atheist that's actually fair to both sides. You know what I mean? One hundred percent. No, so I very much vouch for that for him. Well, and I and I've listened to you, Ogre, many times, and I and I appreciate your candor because it's I I talked to this uh, gentleman on my campus one time, and he was very much you know a staunch atheist, and but he wasn't an asshole. Excuse me for cussing on your channel, but, you, you know <laughs> he wasn't a jerk. Me and him, we we sat on a bench for two hours. He had coffee, I had tea. We sat there for two hours. We talked. We disagreed on many points, many points, but by the end. He was just like, all right, you know, let me check into some of the stuff that you're talking about. And I said, okay, I'm going to check into some of the stuff that you were talking about. Like, that's the kind of conversation I like to have. You know, like, so some of the stuff that I mentioned, I'm not trying to talk over your head. I apologize. I wasn't trying to do that. But, you know. I, I wasn't trying to accuse you either. Oh, okay. I, I just want to make sure. But, you know, go look it up. I mean, I, I'm the biggest one about I'm not. I hate when people bring up obscure information like, yeah. oh, look at this, this pope did this or whatever it's like no i look at something you can literally google now i will tell you this ogre please stay away from wikipedia they have gotten <laughs> worse over the years i did a paper on them by the way i did a paper on them in 2002 or 2012 excuse me and uh they actually really weren't that bad compared to britannica the only thing that they lacked on was the technology side and it was actually kind of a bad percentage against them because britannica doesn't cover technology technology changes like every month um but in the past five years they have actually gotten pretty bad they're not a bad place to start to get some terminology um but i would try to look outside of wikipedia um yeah that, oh, that's I, in general just yeah. just as a suggestion you know i well, I, 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 I yeah i mean when i teach the classes i teach i um you know wikipedia is a good surface level uh, if I try to explain something in one of my classes, you know, I say, yeah, go Google it, Wikipedia, but don't expect to have your paper be just on the Wikipedia because you may have a couple good sentences, but things can get off track. I completely agree with that. Good, good. Because I'm, I'm not, listen, I'm not against Wikipedia because I love going to Wikipedia because I like getting some of the base terms. Yeah, exactly. And then and and then I click on them, and then I find that there's some contradicting information. I'm like, okay, let me go outside Wikipedia because you know I just you know Wikipedia. It a lot of people will say that you can change it. Yes, you can, but I don't know if you know this, but they actually have a huge team that actually checks this stuff. And oh, the only so thing that really? I can say, oh yeah, they actually do. But the thing oh, is, yeah. is that uh, are they biased or not? Eh, yeah, well, yeah, that's you see subjective. that. Yeah, you see that a lot. <laughs> yeah, you do see you do see that a lot because, like, I uh, when I was looking up, uh, did you ever see my video, Chris? That's it's like a three minute video on uh, Samson and Hercules. No, I haven't, but I've, I've, I I am making your channel. I got well, I got sidetracked on Iger and this flat Earth, and I'm I'm oh, I'm, dear determined, Lord. I'm determined to um not 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 change his mind. That's going to be impossible. But I want to um 
it's been a long time since I even went to flat earth. Um, but I, I did actually go into, it's been years ago and um, I had a few good points against them, but I, I just forgot them all to be honest. So I was like, I'll watch your two or three videos you got there. No, and you're then, good. Don't worry about it. I only have a couple no, no, videos. Yeah, but I told him I'd watch what your is your videos. channel? Shadow dancer. Literally shadow dancer. And then at 35, 31. But with your analogy, I do, I do want to watch that. There's a couple you've recommended. I, yeah. I'm, so I, I did this watch, one. Uh, yeah. So I did this one actually for uh, a school <clears throat> project, my uh, college project. And it was just, it was a very short little project or whatever, you know, it was supposed to be an educational thing. And um, I always, of course, always do everything on the Bible. And I was looking at it. It's this, okay. So this book that I have, so I have a full ATX tower. Do you guys know what ATX is? Any of you like uh, nerds here? Talking about computer tower. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean. Okay, so the book that I have is the size of my ATX tower. Wow. And so when I open the book, it actually lays out in this uh, twenty foot. It's twenty feet worth of like accordion pages that fold out, and it's an entire uh, biblical timeline. The biblical timelines at the top, and all the rest of the timelines in the old world. Um. I'll explain the old world and new world if you guys need me to. But anyways, it's all the old world. It's not the new world. Anyways, all the way to 1980 or 1974 or 1984. I can't remember what it is. Anyway, so I was looking at the connections between Samson and Hercules. So I went to this book, you know, this big book that I have. And I looked it up. And, like, I, I kid you not, this this book was written in 1984. And I've looked up other things with Hercules and Samson, and they are literally within about a century of each other. How interesting is that? Like, yep. Ogre, do you, do you know about Samson in the Old Testament, the biblical? Yeah, dude? yeah. Long hair dude, yeah. Yeah, uh, the one that was... Ox, kill 100 people. Yeah. Hmm. No, he killed 1,000 people with the donkey's jawbone. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, okay. So I have some, I have something kind of funny to say about that. So I finally read the entire whole testament like about five years ago, and I called my mom. And I was like, "Mom, finally read the whole whole old testament." And she goes, "Okay, what'd you get out of it?" I was like, "Samson killed a thousand people with donkey's jawbone." And she goes, "You read the whole testament? Is all you got out of it?" And I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> oh, the old testament's pretty boring for 80 percent of it so well like, most yeah, of, yes yeah, like chronology. numbers and yeah. you know leviticus kings oh my gosh by the time of first and second or yeah first Kings, i almost lost my name i was like what <laughs> um but anyway so what i thought was really interesting and i actually did an entire paper in my uh ancient uh greek class on the warrior culture of the romans um the greeks I can't remember the third that I put in there. And I based it off of Gideon and Samson. So Gideon, I believe, is right before Samson. And both of them, so if you look at it as like, I'm a very visual person, so I'm literally like doing air things right here where my hands are up. It's like a bracket. They actually, Gideon and Samson actually bracket Hercules. Gideon was not born to be strong, but he was called by God to be strong. An angel came down and told Gideon that he would, God would give him the strength to be strong. Samson was actually prophesied and born to be strong. They both actually bracket the timeline of Hercules. So I thought that was kind of interesting because if you look at how rumors and legends spread and you look at all, all the stuff that Gideon really doesn't have a lot to do with it because he has no similar life compared to Hercules or Samson. But it's just the fact that he was a strong man and he was a warrior. But almost everything about Samson and Hercules is pretty close. Like Samson was born in captivity. Uh, Hercules was born with Hera, which was the wife of Zeus, was trying to kill him because he slept with another woman or whatever, you know. So from the moment of his birth, he was basically in captivity. He was being, they were trying to kill him all the time. Um, and then Samson had a bunch of tasks that he had to do in order to get his first wife, um, from being apprehended or whatever. And you can kind of consider that labors. Like he had to go and get 30 Philistines tunics. He had to go and do this. He had to go and do this. Well, Hercules had to go and do this, go and do this. They both had two wives or two women or whatever. And they both killed themselves. Most people don't know this. 
But Hercules actually killed himself. He built a pyre um, for himself and he burned himself on it. He climbed on top of it and burned. And Samson knocked down the pillars in the Philistines' temple and killed himself. Very hmm. interesting how similar their lives are. Yeah, hmm. that, that kind of all goes down to that... Um, oh, what's Every movie... YouTube always quotes Joseph Campbell and stuff like that, and the hero myth regarding, uh, you know, who's, Hercules, Samson, Jesus, all that. Like, who's, who's Joseph Campbell? I don't Joseph know. Joseph Campbell name. wrote a book about the hero myth, and it's kind of like you watch a movie with a hero in it, they all kind of follow similar uh, beats. Oh. Um, and okay. And um, the idea is if you think of a hero doing something, you can kind of name any hero in his in history of modern times they all again follow the same idea jesus jesus if you write down jesus as a story arc he's not that different from like captain america yeah but i would say i would argue that, that i would you would think that there'd be uh the miracles would be able to be embellished because some of the stuff he did just wasn't really that i mean it's i mean of course yeah definitely healed the blind i mean stuff like that but you know yeah the water to wine was well no, uh, this is purely a narrative sense not yeah, like captain america you know Rose Lazarus, you know, just purely on a yeah, narrative yeah. sense. I get what you're saying. I, I, I can see that with everybody else but Jesus. <laughs> well, Jesus is the only outlier in all of that. Like the other ones, like I can, I can see that with Samson. I can see that with many others. Um, even like you know Julius Caesar. You know, I mean, yeah, he did he did some amazing things, but well, not again, with Jesus. Jesus was totally different. He's totally an outlier in all of that. Again, it's it's not a religious argument. It's a narrative argument. Like if you wrote that, if you, I don't know it that well. Again, but the argument is all these heroes follow a, a similar path. That's the whole thing about it. And Jesus fits into this. I'd have to. Look it right. up. And, exactly and I think that it's brings purely back, narrative. Purely yeah, narrative. I think that yeah. brings me back to what I'm what I'm doing that what I was looking at tonight while you guys were coming in. I was wanting to do this, but I was wanting to do the open mic, but I figured I'd do this because I didn't want to sit and talk to myself. But um of Jesus <laughs> in the old testament, um and, and there's like I said, there's a twenty four part series and uh, Mike does it so much better than I could even come close to doing. So I encourage you to watch, you know, his videos and um as he goes through one by one. Um and it, it really makes a pretty strong case if you take all 24, you know what I mean? Because um, it just seems like they would have to, um, they would have had to try to weave that into it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Rather, rather than just, you know, cause some stories, you know, or legend stories, they'll, they'll just, they'll go from here and it, and it doesn't really connect to here. And then all of a sudden, you know, this, and now if somebody's writing a book, like you were talking about, like with Harry Potter, of course you would expect to see that if they wrote it over a short period of time, even maybe a few years, but that you're talking uh, hundreds, if not thousands of years, that this all has to um, come together. You know, why, why do we find um, G Jesus in the Old Testament? We really shouldn't find him as much as we do. And we find them like all in the Old Testament when you start to really look. That was my kind of hope. Well, and, you, and the other thing that we can look at too is that Jesus is not portrayed as a superhero at all. Right. Samson is. Hercules is, you know, many others in history are, but Jesus is not. He's actually portrayed as a divisor. He's very divisive. You know, oh, yeah, he, even, yeah. he, even, he even says in the Bible that he divided, you know, he divided the Jews, he divided the Gentiles. And he even said in the last days that, you know, uh, daughter and mother will be divided. Father and son will be father divided. Son, you know, he, yeah. he, 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 he's very much a divider. So he's not, some kind of superhero. So I, I, I see where you're coming from, Ogre. Because yeah, I'm I not trying to that wasn't I've, a religious conversation at all. No, but I, I see what you're coming from because I've seen a video or some video very similar to that, I'm assuming. Very yeah. similar, you know, where it's talking about like, you know, Jesus classifying with the, these other like superhero fi figures. And I'm talking about superhero as in like, you know, like Hercules and whatever, um, how they all follow a similar path. Well, but they misrepresent Jesus every single time because he was not at all. You know, he, he didn't fight anybody. He, he did nothing like these other superheroes whatsoever. If you try to classify Hercules in, or I'm sorry, Samson, you be, I would agree with you, but not Jesus. Jesus had such a different life. Even if it doesn't matter if you believe he was not divine or not, you know, he led such a different life that he is nothing like 
this uh i keep saying superhero because i can't remember the name that you said but you know, um it's it's very it's Captain very different America. yeah like captain america you know they hey, he did not lead he did Hi. not lead the same life yeah can I, can I bring can i bring something into this discussion uh, of course, I, I know i, I I know Ogo mentioned that he doesn't believe in the divinity of Jesus, but yes, we we have witnesses of that divinity. You have no witnesses to abide Genesis, yet you believe it. So welcome to your religion, Ogre. Um, so I guess first of all, I gotta go to bed soon. It's later than I wanted to be up, but um, real quick before I get on that. Uh, statement, George. Hero of a Thousand Faces is the book. Shadow. That's the book that I'm referencing here. I don't know how. I, I don't know how it relates to Jesus. How, that's something that I'd have to look into. But will you, type, will with, you type it in the back chat or the private chat, please? Yeah. Thank you. Can I just shoot you the Wikipedia cop link? Yeah. I mean, there you go. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's a good read. You like books, you like movies a lot more, according to every good YouTuber out there. But um, I I, I wouldn't necessarily, George. I'm not gonna say that I don't have a belief in a biogenesis and stuff like that. I guess the my response to that would be, well, sort of the the chances of all this happening was one because it happened. You know, um, I don't I don't know how the first cell decided it wanted to divide. I don't know how the first fish decided it wanted to breathe. I don't know all those things, but I do believe it happened because I'm here. Well, that's, well, that's a belief. I, yeah, I just said, I believe it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, you said earlier, you don't have a belief, but you do have a belief. You just mentioned that you had a belief that it happened. Yes. I don't believe the divine when you reference stories of Alexander the great, Hannibal, what have you? If they, if those stories claim divine things, I don't believe those things were divine. No, but no, I do believe I was, Hannibal and Alexander the Great existed. No, no, I was talking about a biogenesis, <laughs> and you said you don't ha hold that belief. That that in itself is a belief. I don't know what statement you're referring to. Sorry, but oh, well, early earlier on when I brought up the question of. Uh, uh, Jesus divinity, and I said, "Well, you believe in a by the divinity of a by Genesis, uh, and you said you don't hold that belief. You don't hold the belief of by Genesis, and then then you then you said, but I believe that it happened. Well, that's a belief. You know, it's a contradictory yes. belief, but it's a belief. Um, <laughs> I, I guess I'd have to, yeah." I if I, what I said earlier was different than what I'm saying now, I apologize. But the way I would phrase it is, I believe these things happened. I think that's a legitimate phrasing of it. I'm not too high on uh, specific tautologies and necessarily. You know, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I hope I don't be that person that just yells logical fallacies as if that's the answer to your question. Um, oh no no! I wasn't I saying that. I was saying different. what you said was contradictory. It's 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 a bit like someone saying there's no such thing as right or wrong. You'd have to then say, is that right or wrong for saying yeah. that? So, you know what I mean? Yeah. So what? So what George is saying is that you either believe or you don't believe in it. So you either believe that you came from something that is, you know, you you can't see it. You've never seen it. We have no detectable evidence for it, right? Yes. And then you're trying to say that we can't see Jesus. We have no detectable evidence for it. So therefore it's a belief, right? You believe in something. We believe in something. You have a belief. Therefore you have. What were well, we saying, well, George? Well, <laughs> Am I? Yeah, more like well, a worldview. We all have a worldview. You know, I would well, say. Yeah, worldview works. Yeah. No, it's not, it's not worldview. It's a, it's a belief. I you have a belief. Yes. 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 Yeah. We have a belief too. Yes. Yes. Well, just, but yours is Jesse, wrong. Jesse, o Oga mentioned that he thought that the, the stories of uh, Jesus' resurrection are stories. Well, so are the stories of Alexander the Great, Hannibal, um, sure. you know, pretty much every ancient uh, figure that you can think of. Yes. They're stories. They can't be collaborated. There's more evidence about Jesus than there, are, than there is about 
Alexander the Great and Hannibal. Absolutely. By so, far. So, I so think- they're all stories. So you just choose to believe one story versus uh, versus another story. Well, I don't believe. I believe Alexander the Great conquered most of uh, the Mediterranean. I don't believe. I don't know of any stories of Alexander the Great doing something that a human couldn't do. Are there stories of Alexander the Great flying or breathing fire or something? No. The- but well, then, so that's then, the, okay, then, so how, and you, I don't see how this is like a one to one comparison. Jesus raised people from the dead and hung out with prostitutes. Alexander the Great hung out with prostitutes, I believe that, but I don't remember Alexander the Great raising people from the dead. So, so again, you, you, you're not accepting the divinity of Jesus, Correct. but you accept the divinity of a biogenesis. Because that, that in itself is a supernatural uh, event. Well, then we have to get into that different conversation. I, don't, I, don't, I do not put Jesus and whatever existed X billion years ago on the planet Earth to be in the same category. Well, but it so. has to be some kind of living mind. It has to be well, something that made a decision <laughs> to do something. I mean, and even in your own vocabulary, you even have to do it in your own vocabulary, saying it had to make a decision to leave the water. Well, who yes. made it made the decision? Well, I would be of the opinion that the natural processes of how the brain functions, chemical reactions, electricity, what have you, in the mechanism that is life allows those things to naturally occur. And so that big old name, God, that you just named told it to get out of the water. Because all that you just said does not happen. How do plant, Why are plants not walking right now? Well, they oh, because they can't. Oh. They're plants, and they've always been plants. Yes. Okay. But can I can I take it? Can I go take you to science? Okay, you, you believe in science, okay? I mean, you're a geophysicist. Yes. So you you'd have to agree that the first law of thermodynamics, uh, energy and matter, can neither be created nor destroyed. You, you'd have to believe that because it's that's what science says. Yet, on the other hand, you believe that a single dot exploded or inf- inflated, call it whatever you like, created everything. That's supernatural. That goes against science. Well, I guess so. I got to go to bed soon. So I don't mean to cut this conversation oh, off. You're, you're fine. We appreciate, I appreciate you coming in, Joel. Uh, but, you know, we're we'll talking, if, you, if we're getting into the physics side of things, we got to talk about the definitions and the math behind this stuff. And the first law of thermodynamics is a set equation regarding entropy, regarding energy transfer between hot and cold work, thermodynamics, stuff like that. And it really doesn't apply too well to the concepts of expansion space time. Like, no, no, no. They don't map one to one. No, no, they're all the laws of thermodynamics. I was talking about the first law of thermodynamics. Yeah, that's the first law is the entropy yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. No, entropy, the, that's the entropy, second law. You can't, get, you can't get past entropy. No matter what you look at, you cannot get past entropy. Yeah, it's wow. pretty Entropy would be like you know, just like the the uh, the easy example is like you know, you clean your room up and you come back a week uh, later. Is it is it got a tendency to it's got a tendency to, to disorder? Would be wouldn't that be kind of uh, no? Uh, and entropy would be more like uh, so we were better in the past and we're getting worse. That's so entropy. The way so I, well, yeah, I mean, like t- things like tend to we're, disorder, yeah. move towards uh, disorder rather than order. No, no, no. Entropy okay, is I'm literally a deg- degradation. Like we are losing, it's going down. That's entropy. Entropy means a degradation. Well, it's a, the, prob- the probably scientific definition is the loss of uh, energy to do work. So you're always reducing that energy and ultimately it'll completely go away and you'll get to a uh, what they call a heat death. There'll be no more energy available. Uh, because it'll it'll actually expand so far out that it'll, every, everything will be so cold, nothing can survive. Well, and that would be that would be entropy. That would be everything yes, that we yeah. yeah that would be everything we see. It's, I was it's trying to go a little yeah. Outside yeah, it's it's, it's yeah. entropy. It's entropy is uh, just degradation. 
Yeah. It's a more Again, simpler I, I, turn. I got to point out, you guys are using these, you're, you're adding, you're like personifying these uh, laws, these equations into something more than they should be. This idea that uh, entropy relates to how your room doesn't clean itself is beyond yeah. the scope of what the okay. thermodynamics and the transfer of heat and energy actually works. Well, I mean, well the, but the, we the, the reason that example stands is that you would have to put energy in to get in the to keep it. I mean, like from to stay straight from, from not to it, it tends to move to disorder. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get what Chris was trying to say is that he he's trying to say that you have to add in all that extra energy. But the thing is, we're not trying to change entropy. Entropy is entropy. You cannot change it. We see it today. It is a non-changeable law. It is the law sure. of entropy, the first law of thermodynamics. You cannot change it. We are degrading. I mean, if you look at our magnetic fields, it's degrading. Everything oh, is degrading. And, that, and that's where we, that's what we would argue, like an evolution. You, what's what you really see in, in about every case is like even in the examples they give of uh, beneficial mutations is like there something's being lost to gain something. You know what I mean? And um, so. Yeah, this is way off of if, yeah, I, well, if, if Isaac is Jesus at this point, but yeah, <laughs> um, I got you. So I I would love to have these conversations later. Um, yeah, no problem, man. We I, gotta wait, I got here. classes to teach tomorrow. Yeah, so I, I, we understand. I, 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 think, I thank you for coming in again. Yeah, thank you, Orger. He's yeah. for yeah. got people view, and I, and I appreciate it. So I, yeah, I got, I'll take I, care, I, but, I got yep. before, be, got before you go. Can you give us your first name at least, your real name? Um, I have seen too many people in my field get beat up on at some point <laughs> via YouTube. Make so up a name. I, okay, I yeah. enjoy my anonymity. Thank you very much. Make I, it, understand, make up a name. I understand where you're coming from, but my first name is George. Yes. My first name is Jesse. Yes. Nice to meet you, George. Nice to meet you, Jesse. I think Ogre works just fine for me. Okay, no worries. I, I respect that. I respect that. <laughs> All right. Take care. Hey, thanks for coming in, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Ogre, I, I appreciate the skeptical view because.